Hey, let's uh, move on here because we've got a couple of guests. Christine Johnson and Caitlin Rogers are joining us this morning. Christine Johnson is a restaurant trends expert, and Caitlin Rogers is director of marketing at Wine Sight Exhibitions. Good morning, Christine and Caitlin. Can you hear us okay? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Great to have you with us. You're on with Rob, that would be me, and John. That's me. And Bill. And that's me. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, uh, first and foremost, uh, what I want to know is when will we get to the point where on a Friday or Saturday night you can get a dinner reservation at a restaurant without having to call two weeks in advance? It seems like restaurants are packed all the time now. Well, isn't that great? We're finally coming out of COVID and, and restaurants are now coming back from from the, the downturn that they experienced. So um, I appreciate the, the wait. So plan, plan, plan. <laughs> plan ahead, plan ahead, right. All right, let's talk about the latest trends in the restaurant uh, business. How, how have they come through uh, since COVID, and uh, what are some of the newest things that we can see in restaurants? Well, I'll tell you, we've welcomed over 50,000 food service professionals to our show this past weekend. Today's day three, and we are working through 2,100 different exhibitors that are covering 11 football fields of space and offer up 900 different product categories. So there's a lot to see and taste here at the show. Um, but we are going to talk about trends. So we're going to talk about trends in food, beverage, and technology. Where yeah, for seeing so many... Where, so is, many where is the new product? Oh, go, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Where is the 2023 National Restaurant Association show? Oh, this I'm year? sorry. We're in Chicago. We're Thank in you. Chicago right now. Okay. Uh, you were about to say, go right ahead. Yes, I was just going to jump right into the trends. I'm so excited. We're seeing so many new trends and new products at the show floor this year. Um, one of the trends that we're seeing that we're excited about is there's so many plant based plant-based foods this year. Plant-based is not a new trend, but it's really taken the show by storm. We're seeing new flavors, new product categories, seafood in particular. We have a couple of award winners in the seafood category. We've got a tuna filet from Current Foods and a shrimp from New Wave Foods. They are both so delicious. I'm not a vegan, but they had me going back for seconds. And we are also seeing a lot of global influences, African flavors, Asian flavors, exotic ingredients, bold spices. I tried a gojujang Korean chili paste. It's a great example of that. It's savory, spicy, so versatile. Chefs are using it in traditional dishes like bibimbap and for a spicy twist on, fry, uh, on things like fried chicken and tacos. We're also seeing classic retro dishes, nostalgic products. Uh, one example is a uh, Olipop, which is a, a probiotic soda. It's, it's got a delicious vintage taste, a retro design, um, but it's got those probiotics. So it's healthy, it's tasty, it's good for the planet. It's all the things that today's consumer really wants. Mr. Gilstrap. I'm trying to wrap my head around plant-based seafood. That just that's that's I not know. working for me. But it's early. Um, it's really good. The flavor the flavor has really improved over the years. It, and yeah, it, the the flavor is really what takes it up a notch. I tried it honestly in a, a spicy tuna roll yesterday, and it was so good. I really did go back for seconds. I was surprised but delighted. <laughs> what is, in your experience, speaking of restaurants in general, I'm always amazed that it's almost like there are locations that are haunted. They should be good restaurants. They should attract a lot of attention, but they just don't get the traction. And then there's a new ownership and they don't get the attraction. On the other hand, you know, half a mile away, there's, there's kind of a dump with dirty ceilings and, 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 you know, just it, you look at it and you think nobody wants to eat there and there's a line wrapped around the, the block to get in. Is there any discussion of what the X factor is that makes for the success or failure of a restaurant beyond the food? I always think it's menu. So those people that are standing outside waiting to get in know that food and, and are passionate about that food. I think the new restaurants that are coming up probably just don't have that Instagrammable food or that following yet. So, you know, I love my tried and true, but I also like to explore as well. So the selfie opportunity is important these days. Yes, for Gen Z, selfies are the thing. <laughs> they like to be able to uh, Instagram their food and showcase what they're where they're eating and what they're eating and you know all those things associated with it. Yeah, one of the trends uh, that we have been talking about is how younger generations really want a memorable experience. So we're seeing restaurants come out with new concepts like pickleball restaurants. Um, we're also <laughs> seeing signature desserts. Yes, yeah, pickleball. Yeah. Can you believe it? If they can do top golf, they can do pickleball. <laughs> oh my goodness! So one of the um, products that we tried on the show floor are these um, 
uh, cookie shot glasses, which they're serving on the show floor today with, um, with milk, with iced coffee, even with cocktails. And they are so yummy. They've got our attendees buzzing. I want to go back and get more today. <laughs> Would it have killed you all to send a care package in advance of this of this episode I know, you know, I know it's, it's, we have a, we're, we're surrandom yeah. by food we're on the board hungry. around and we can we can visit anywhere and get anything we want <laughs> yeah uh good good morning ladies uh the audience that you the in in audience uh from your show obviously it'd be uh the magazines the blog the social media uh the chain large change upscale restaurant like how quickly do these trends become uh, integrated into the local mom and pop restaurants in the in the regions in the more well rural trends areas? really yeah. start with the independent restaurant. They're the first ones really to adopt these new foods and these new tastes, and then you'll finally see it go up, and they'll the chains will start adopting them. But really, independent restaurants, those mom and pops, really are those those front runners in all that is setting the trend. Able to experiment, yeah. Is is the uh, there are a lot of cooking shows on TV now? I know because I watch them all. You know, I'm, I'm addicted to the to the competition shows and and how to. I'm the I am the the cook of of the household. Do you think that that those shows, Food Network and the others, have had an impact on the popularity of restaurants and on the the ingenuity of the chefs that are running them or running the kitchens? Yes, I do. Um, I think uh, things like Top Chef or any of those different competitions have really brought forth young chefs into the spotlight. But equally, I think they've all made us foodies. They've all made us want to explore different tastes and try different things that we've seen on TV that probably we wouldn't have done because I'll be honest, I grew up with my grandmother making me grilled cheese sandwiches. So it's really good to see something new and different and go out and try it. I grew up in a house where vegetables all came out of the can, and uh, yeah. <laughs> as did a lot of other things, actually. God rest her. My mother was not the champion cook, but she was a lovely lady. Um, and I, these cooking shows have actually introduced me to a lot of new flavors I didn't even know existed. And um, spice, spices other than salt are, yeah. are are new in the last, what, 20 years to people of my generation. So, so the purpose of this show, is this for restaurants to showcase? Uh, who are we, who's, who's talking to each other? Well, who's, the, who's the customer at the right, show? It's, it's really exhibitors. So it's, it's all the manufacturers that, that support restaurants in the food service industry. So it could be from equipment, technology, all the different foods. We've got Kraft Heinz here. We've got Red Bull. We've got Pepsi. We've got Coca-Cola. We've got um, Allen Brothers. We've got all sorts of different products here on the show floor for restaurant tours to come in and try. So we're not only just doing chains and independents, but we also have non-commercial. So we had a huge military presence here on Saturday for Armed Forces Day, and they're going around seeing what's new and different so they can take it back to their bases, as well as schools and universities, hospitals, everybody that that, that really delivers and makes food for consumption away from home, this is the place to be. Does this, your show, is it annual and does it stay in Chicago every year or does it uh, move around? Yes, we are annual and we've been in Chicago since 1960. Uh, we're a 102 year old trade show and uh, Chicago is our home. Are there other cities that have comparable trade shows? Not as big as this one. Um, there are state run, there's state run shows like Texas restaurant show, Florida restaurant show. There are some state runs, but this is the biggest, the biggest in the Western Hemisphere, and uh, we've got a lot of a lot of people running around. Hey, I want to thank you both so much for today. I know you have many other of these to do today. So, Christine and Caitlin, best of luck to you, and have a great time at the show as it continues in Chicago. Thank well, gentlemen, you so much. thank you so much.